Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. This time is only a two week hiatus, so uh, much better than the month, right? So you may notice the background, it's a little bit different. I'm still waiting on my green screen, all that stuff to come in. So you don't have to look at this hellacious background. But guys, we are starting back with a brand new series, something I would like to call Masterclass Matchups. Now we will eventually go through every single class in the game. And this week we are starting with a Dragonite, obviously. Next week is probably going to be the Sorcerer, and the week after that is probably going to be the Necromancer, just whatever tunes I have ready at the time. So guys, if you want to get better at PvP, if you want to learn why you're getting absolutely dumpstered by this class, this class, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you all exactly what you need to be doing, your offensive rotations, your defensive rotations, suggest the skill sets, literally everything you guys need to know to counter whatever class you come across. And we're starting right now. And before we dive on into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. The best way to support the channel is with a simple like and sub, but if you want to go a little bit further and become an absolute Chad, we do have YouTube memberships enabled as well as Patreon. Some of the benefits include emojis, shoutouts in each and every single one of my videos, links to private Discord channels, and one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, a little bit stuck, everything is down in the description below. Now let's get into the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start out with the DK versus the Mag Sork. Now, when it comes to skills, you can obviously run wings, but that's kind of cheesy and people's going to kind of frown upon you for doing that. So uh, running wings, yeah, you're going to live, but no one's really going to end the fight anytime soon. So just just try not to run wings. So uh, take a look at my champion points. I'm actually re rearranging some of my champion points because this is one of the better Mag Sorks in the game and I don't want to get my cheeks clapped. OK, so what I'm doing is actually slotting Bastion. So what Bastion does is it increases the effectiveness of your shields by 15%, but it also increases the damage against shields by 15%. So if you know you're going to be sweating your ass off against a Mag Sork, well, it's good to slot Bastion on your DK because essentially that's a 15% damage swing in your favor. So just kind of looking at our ability bar, uh, I'm running a Burning Spell Weave Iron Blood. This is my open world build. I run on literally everything. So I'm running Rapid Region, um, Ash Cloud, you know, for a Hots, you know, whatever. DK is all about buff and debuff management, guys, and that's true for all classes, and uh, not just the Mag Sword. So uh, right from the start here, kind of take a look. Um, you typically want to uh, prep your Molten Whip up to three sacks at the start of the fight, just so you can apply a lot of pressure right from the beginning. I didn't do that, but I mean, it is what it is. So um, from the start, um, th th there's nothing screwy going on. Um, and take a look at my buffs. I always stare at your buffs all the time. Um, with the Mag Sword, they pretty much have like one burst combo. They're going to like flame reach you into a frag, into a curse, you know, in, in, the, in, in, in into whatever. So as long as you are paying attention to your debuff bar, uh, specifically vicious curse down, it, you can kind of tell when the burst is going to come. So um, by looking at his build, um, I can already tell he's running a frost staff and a destro staff. Um, what does that mean? So always get in the habit of looking at what weapon types your opponent is running because that's going to kind of dictate how they're going to play out the fight, right? Because he doesn't have a restoration staff, I know his healing is going to be really low. So the only way a Mag Sword can really heal is Dark Conversion and Crit Surge. That's it. Dark Conversion, we can interrupt, we can CC him, and then Crit Surge, well, the only way to mitigate that is just roll dodge, delay, and hit you in the first place to get crits. So kind of rule of thumb against like any Mag Sword, like any time, especially running this build, when they lose like half their health like right now tricks is like 60 percent health you need to just pressure them as much as possible okay because they don't have a burst heal they have absolutely nothing just do your basic dk rotations keep all your dots up especially burning embers because you're going to need the heals for that right here you need to pay very close attention to cast animation so right here i know he pops overload okay um, i actually have iron blood up so i'm not too worried about it so you have like one or two options you can either go um, super defensive, you can CC him, kind of roll dodge away, kind of get your resources back, or you can do just the opposite and really pressure the Sork. So the best offense is a good defense. You're going to hear me say that so many times in this video, it's going to make you sick. So an interesting bug, um, if you, you can actually catch the Sork in a heavy attack from their overload uh, bar. Um, it doesn't happen often, but sometimes you can like literally physically lock them into a heavy attack animation then they they can't do anything they they, they can't swap bars they can't, they can't do jack shit so if you're able to do that it's a free win for you it doesn't happen in this case but right here is really interesting and this kind of turned the the tide of the fight really quick um tricks expected to go um offensive um i immediately leap to get the overshield obviously and pressured him so 
what he has to do now he has to go defensive so what a lot of sorks forget to do uh they forget to to untoggle their overload i mean he still has overload toggled right here even after the cc and what this causes it causes the mag sword to see, see right there there's no reason he should be overload lie attacking me right now especially since i ferocious leap i have a shield up and you know iron blood there's no reason he should be wasting his old lie attacking me so what will happen is they will forget to untoggle it and then they'll just waste all their ultimate with these these wet noodles you know that they're hitting you with so um a little bit of an oversight on his part again just just keep up the pressure uh mag Sorks typically have an issue with stamina recovery especially in duels you just have to sacrifice a lot to, to get as much damage as you possibly can okay so with that being said me being a sorg main prior to transferring over to pc i mean just playing against a lot of sorgs i know to stay up on top of them like shit on stink like white on rice okay like spaghetti and meat bowl like lamb and tuna fish okay you need to stay on them like 100 percent of the time do not let up the pressure like whatsoever see right now he's at 30 percent health i cannot let him get capped off meaning i cannot let him get dark conversion if i can help it do not let him get crits by either blocking or roll dodge and that's exactly what i'm doing i'm constantly broadcasting i'm look i'm constantly broadcasting literally everything so he can't get a crit i'm roll dodging literally everything so he can't get a crit i'm tossing down my own actual just so i have heals available so i can keep up the pressure he's, he's roll dodging it's right here i cc him we can get a crit that's really unfortunate so look what i'm doing right here i'm not able to burst him right here so the only way he gets out of this situation is if he's able to heal okay so I roll dodge right there. He missed a couple of lie attacks. Look, I'm in no health. Like, I'm in no room of dying, okay? The reason I'm not pressuring him right here is because I don't have my times three Mullen Fury stacks. I know his hard words going to fall off anyway, right? I'm just letting him not hit me. He has zero dots on me, so he can't crit. I'm roll dodging everything. He can't heal. And he knows if I if he tries dark conversion, I'm either going to bash or, or, or CC him. And that's what allows us to get this kill is just knowing what weapon types they had right from the start so what allowed me to like clean up like th this very very easily is just identifying what weapon types that uh Trix was running at the time frost staff flame reach or frost staff death staff it doesn't have a burst seal so once he loses health it's gone so as long as you keep the pressure um you're good to go against a mag sword now if they're running like a wrestler staff you know it's, it's, i mean that's a totally different story but it's very important for you to just like identify right from the start of the duel there's so much information available in like the first five to ten seconds of the duel it's insane and we're really really going to dive into that when we hop over into the stamina section which is uh right now okay so this one's gonna be against ben this is stam sorg so when it comes to cp is anything that's going to uh, give you dot mitigation or drag damage mitigation uh, is an absolute must because stam sorgs are grossly overtuned of this patch i mean going to next patch i mean they, they, they really got nerfed but uh, there's hellacious damage like they benefited from the hybridization changes like like no other um, the thing about the stem sork is it's even more cookie cutter than than the mag sork in my opinion and it's a lot squishier so stem sork wallet does have a lot going for it um, a lot of pressure a lot of dot pressure a lot of burst pressure uh, it is pretty predictable you do have a downtime on your resource management because stem sorks they'll come in blow their load and then they'll spend the next five to ten seconds dark conversion getting resources dotting you up and they'll come in and do it again come in and do it again so when they're in those in between stages that's when you need to pressure them because the stamp sort has like really no good way of getting the resources back other than like spamming dark conversion from the mag pool to get their health and stamina pull back so if you're able to interrupt that at all that pays off massive dividends so start with the fight right now right here like i said guys first five seconds of the fight you need to identify what they're using Piggy Ben's using a frost staff and a bow. Boom, right there. That gave me so much information that he is uh, it, people who run a bow build, it's a dot build, like straight up. Um, he's gonna be running about uh bound armament, and he's also gonna be running uh crystal weapons, obviously, like any other stamp sort is. And he's gonna have a lot of dots. I I know what's gonna happen, but the thing is he's not gonna have a burst heal, right? The only thing he's gonna have is dark conversion, crit surge, and vigor. He is running vigor on this. Nothing I do about vigor. So when I see the other two actions like dark conversion i need to inter interrupt that quick as possible and when he gets low in health i need to just dodge all of his attacks so he can't heal so those are the two things i can deal with you know on the dragonite so kind of going over my bar setup down here um this is the one bar uh oaken break uh pretty much the most overpowered pvp build there ever existed in high isles even chris Rhea, so went on record and said it during pvp top five <laughs> cough cough but um uh, Running Vigor is like a dot. We're running Flames of Oblivion with Molten Whip is our Seething Fury stacks. You know, just uh, yada yada. You know, using Flames of Oblivion is our spam. Well, as you guys know, if you watch my channel, 
uh, vigor for, uh, excuse me, a coagulating blood for a burst still in case we need it. And then we're running Shattering Rocks for like a little pseudo heal and a CC. So right here, guys, uh, I'm going to give you a moment. What sets is he running right now? Give me a little, uh, a little T.O. I'm going to take a little, a little sippy poo here. Uh, what sets is he running? I, you know without a doubt what sets he's running right now just by looking at the screen. So, when I say it a little while ago, the first five seconds of the fight is usually when you figure out uh, pretty much the entire build. I know his exact build. Right here, Savage Werewolf. Uh, he's actually running Hunting Curse, so this is actually going to work into our advantage because most people burst the Hunting Curse around the two second mark, so until this drops like two seconds, we're fine. But look at these debuffs, guys. These debuffs are actually lasting 16 seconds. So, that leads me to believe that Serpent's Disdain. So we know what he's running. I don't know what monster set he's running. He might be like Blood Spawn or something. Um, but he's running Serpent's Disdain, Savage Werewolf. And if it's not Savage Werewolf, I mean, I really don't know what the other set is, but we can definitely identify one set right here. So because we can kind of understand what sets he's running, we kind of know how he's going to play. Super Glass Cannon, you know, just, just typical stamp sort of things. But he's going to be really squishy. So it's very important during that downtime between the stamp sorks burst combo you hit him hard as you can because again they want the resource sustain issues and they don't really have a re reliable burst deal okay so right here um, another tip just in general not just against the stamp sword but like the the very first kind of start of the fight it's important for you to kind of get a feel of how your opponents how much damage your opponent can actually do um he actually catches me off guard quite a couple times which is really impressive um, with, uh, with the amount of burst combos, I'm gonna show you guys how I mess up. Like right, right here, I should have probably died. No, it, it's actually later. I'll show you guys. But again, swords. What they're going to do? They're going to wait. They're going to streak a lot. All right. We have about two seconds. They're going to streak, going for the burst combo. Yada yada. Right here, I would have died. So right here is why I want to show you guys. I was not expecting this whatsoever. So this is what I'm saying. Pay attention to your debuffs. Right here, I didn't think he was going to be able to do anything. He's already streaking. I'm CC immune. You know, Curse is about to pop. Curse hits me for like almost 10k. It hits, it hits me for about 8k right there. I, just by looking at that. If he was able to CC me there, I've been dead. Luckily, he already streaked and he couldn't CC me. But, but that's what I'm telling you guys. Just because you think you're safe, you're probably not. Against the Stamp Sword, you have to be topped off. Like, this class is super, super scary. With Bound Arm and his Crystal Weapons, Haunting Curse, like all these dots. All these stats effects, like, like look at all this. We got hemorrhage. We got, we got like, where the hell this is? Crip light. I don't know. I know this is gonna make you take more damage. Like, I don't know what all these are, but I know they're not good. They're bad. Okay, so you need to top yourself off as much as physically possible. See, right here, I got down to like one point. It was like, yeah, one point three k health. Um, this, the surprising amount burst, and this wasn't even part of his burst combo. This is just him like streaking away, and you know what I mean? Like, this you gotta pay attention, guys. Even catches veterans like me off guard, so kind of get up to full pressure him uh, as usual. Pay attention to the knives around him. You know that's um, indicative of a bound arm. That's um, the really cool thing about about arm is it's you'll you'll flash a purple glow, like you'll see the four the lights. Let's see if I can catch it here in a, in a freeze frame a little later. But you actually glow, and uh, that's a really good sign for when you need to roll dodge. So it's kind of pressuring him like normal. But so uh, we'll explain this section uh, right here in just a moment of why I was actually able to kill him. But uh, let me go back to my point about uh, Bound Arm. So you'll see him flash purple. And the only thing you have to do is a really roll dodge. You can dodge every bit of that. Nothing you can do about um, uh, crystal weapons. There's no lie attack. You can do hellacious damage anyway. But uh, let's kind of run back here. and show you what my thought process is. So he's buffing, debuffing, you know, whatever. Um, I'm just doing your basic DK thing. Keep your keep your dots up if you have them. Keep keep all your hots up. You have to keep hots up against this class. You, you just absolutely have to. Um, I have corrosive, so I'm in no harm of you know dying here. So I'm just propping my fury stacks on pop corrosive. Right here is kind of like the turning point in the fight. Um, you have corrosive up. You're pretty much invincible. Um, ben doesn't make a mistake. I'm not sure if he didn't notice I was in corrosive or he thought I was really low health that he uh, he could potentially burst me, but. You can health bait on the DK very, very well. Um, you're actually surprisingly tanky, especially if you're running BAMP Stage 3, which I'm not in this clip, but um, you definitely can. So he actually commits to a little bit of damage here and, instead of healing up. See, so he streaks, try to create space, which is the correct call. Right here it is very, very important, even though he was really low health, brain corrosive. He was at probably like two-thirds health. Right here was 
this this was the nail in the coffin for him he is not going to be able to roll dodge he's not going to be able to really block you know break any cc because i know he's low on resources that's just the way his stam sork is you put all your resources in into your damage and you just kind of funnel over your magic or your stamina sustaining your health sustain um i've interrupted during this fight i've interrupted two dark conversions and uh, again guys another thing you can do is wait till the tail end of his dark conversion that's exactly what i do right here watch so i hit him with the 16k crit whip you know he he's panicking so right here i cc him at the last second of his dark conversion so you can't see it because his fucking flags in the way but right here he starts the animation and i wait until the last possible second the reason i wait until the last possible second wasn't because he was coming up and cool down it was because i wanted him to think that he got this heal off okay this would have been like a six to like eight k burst heal, and then that would have easily put him out of burst range for me. Especially, you know, I, I, if I got lucky, I would be able to hit him with like another sixteen k whip. But odds are, that's not going to happen. I have like a twenty percent crit chance, right? So by waiting that long, and this is where jumping actually comes to bite you in the ass, guys. I know I've made videos and telling you how you should jump all the time. This is a prime moment when jumping gets you killed. Very, very new scenario. So. What now happened is I wait till the tail end of a dark conversion, give him the full sense of security, he gets the heal. He doesn't get the heal, so now he's he, he's in burst range, okay? He jumps at the tail end of it as well, which is like worst case scenario. So now he has even less time to react. You guys know if you get CC while you're in the air, you have to wait until you hit the ground before you can break CC. And this is where jumping screws you over. So he literally handed this win to me um, on a silver platter just, just by jumping. So really be cautious of jumping. Okay, I, I don't know how to say it anymore, but right here. So notice he had to actually hit the ground first before he could break CC. So he probably spins. Like, like, look how long he's actually CC and he can't do anything. So this added to... Already his 1.2 cast animation of Dark Conversion, he's not doing anything. That allows you to get a global cooldown off. But he's also CC right when he jumps, like literally perfect timing. So this entire time he's in the air, it's probably like another, what, half to three quarters of a second. He's stunned. He can't do anything. So the past three seconds, he is spent at 13k health, not able to do jack shit. And this is the only reason I was able to get this kill. I didn't even wait until my times three of Fury Stacks just because... I knew if I tried to pump one more Flames Oblivion to get to times three right here, I would probably miss my chance. So right here, because I see him flying through the air fossilized, I know that whatever damage I have right now, I, I just need to go right now. And this is why timing is so important on the Dragonite. If I was to use Flames Oblivion then a Flame Lash, he would have possibly been able to break free, roll dodge, streak away, CC me again, and then I can't get up to him because he's over here and he's going to get two or three dark conversions off in a bigger, just like that, and he'd be back up to full in no time. So this is one instance to where, I mean, so, some sometimes the stars align in your favor. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to about do it for today's video. If there's anything I need to improve on, something I need to break down even further, let me know down in the comments. I'm not sure how this series is going to go. Uh, this may be the worst episode of the series I, I really hope it's not like the the absolute worst but i want to know what you guys want to know in these videos to me i'm just kind of doing like a brief overview of everything a thought process that's kind of going in and out of my head but if you guys want a more thorough breakdown i can do that if you want to to pick my brain about you know specific rotations like specific skill priorities you know things like that i can definitely break that down further for you guys as well but i'm not gonna know any of that unless you comment down below please tell me what you guys want to see in this this series because i think it's a really good series for you to actually want to learn a class and say you never played a dragon eye before you're not going to know you know how to play against other classes you're not going to know you know all, all, all these little you know, tips and tricks and like little, little niche scenarios right so i really want to make pvp great again make eso great again and just have a inviting environment for everyone to like learn their class you know not feel like they're struggling not feel like they're getting shit on not feeling like they're they're not improving okay so hopefully this series is going to help you guys even if you're veterans you know you know maybe you learn something from this you know maybe not this is kind of tended toward more the, the casual kind of newer players but uh, i think it's really good uh, to have out there at least some sort of content so you guys can learn um, a class you want to get really good at class i mean this is, this is a pretty decent way to learn it uh, in my opinion so let me, get, let me know what you guys think down in the comments and personally if you want to like expedite your whole pvp grind whatsoever i do have patreon tiers where i offer one uh one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching pretty much anytime i'm available on discord also some of my tiers on my youtube memberships have pvp coaching attached to them as well as shout outs and the emojis and uh, all that fun stuff so 
If any of that sounds interesting to you, that's an awesome way to support the channel. Link is down in the description below. Um, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. And uh, I'm going to go fix my car because the Serpentine belt snapped. And I'm up shit creek without a paddle because I got work tomorrow. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to play around with that. Peace.